production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. PNC, committed to Central Ohio, for the achiever in you. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High, a local dance instructor teaches the art of break dancing along with some valuable life lessons. You know, if you give them character, personality, and hard work, they're going to fulfill their dream and, and work hard at it. And a studio performance by Columbus singer songwriter T Wong. And we can be upside down on strangers out This and more right now on Broad and High. And we can be. Welcome to Broad and High. I'm WSU producer Jackie Schaefer, filling in for Kate Quickle, who's on maternity leave. Columbus native James Alexander teaches much more than popping and locking. He's passing down the history and culture of hip hop at his dance studio off Parsons Avenue on the South Side. His students aren't just learning the ins and outs of break dancing, they are also learning valuable life lessons. Check it out. Music is not meant to be heard, it is meant to be felt, right? So let's go ahead and get warmed up. I didn't know I was going to be a dancer growing up. I wanted to be an elementary school teacher and this ended up being what I'm doing. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. My name is James Alexander. I'm the owner of Flavored Flow Studio. So here at Flavored Flow, my main focus is to introduce the dance and pass it down correctly. Um, in the culture of hip hop. There's a lot of stigma, negative stigma around hip hop uh, culture and the dance due to the media. And that, that's not really what hip hop culture is about or even the dance. In hip hop culture, we have three main dances to the culture. There's breaking, which is the original style of hip hop culture. Then there, are, there was popping, which is the West Coast, came from Fresno, California, Northern California. And then we have locking, which came from um, Los Angeles, California. All right, ready? Here, I teach breaking and popping. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's start doing a little turn. Popping is more known a lot of people, because of the media, have called it popping and locking, nice, or pop and lock, um, which counts. is actually two, two different dances. Three, four, two, uh, with one. popping, in the you 70s, it. it was just a muscle isolation. It was just a quick hit of the muscle. Now, a lot of people look at it as the robot, the waves, the muscle isolations, um, different things like that. I've been dancing for about, this will be my seventh year dancing. I came to Columbus in June. I found this place in August, um, and it's been wonderful. It's my face, it's probably been my favorite dance studio to learn and practice from. Here it's kind of more, it's more relaxed. It's more about the art than anything else. That's kind of what I found out unique here. Uh, it's like visual poetry. I mean, a song comes on, you hear the beat, you kind of, your body starts bouncing, and you're like, ka, 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 ah, and just like get to it. It's just exciting. Um, with B-Boy, B-Girl, originally that meant Bronx Boy, Bronx Girl, because that's where it originated from. And then it moved out of the Bronx and they started calling it Breakin' or Break Boy, Break Girl. And the term originally means to break out and dance. When the media picked it up in 1982, they started calling it Break Dancing because we danced to the break of the music. Coincidentally, that's what we do dance to. So breaking the original style of hip hop, started in the late 60s in the Bronx. Uh, when it started, it was only dancing on your feet. When California started picking it up, they really started putting in the power moves. And now it's, you know, it's almost a must that you mix all these together. 
Uh, there are four parts, main parts to the dance. There's top rock, which is like dancing on your feet. That's your introduction. And then when you get down to the ground, you got your uh, footwork, which is dancing you on your hands and feet. Go back down to where you're at. Tap. Go back to squat. Five, six, seven, eight, and go. Freezes, of course, just stop in motion and power moves, which are the power moves are what breaking is known for. Um, the windmills, the head spins, stuff on your hands. And I think this is where a lot of the misconceptions of breaking came from is that it's freestyle, which it is. But I think a lot of people think freestyle is doing whatever you want, however you want. And what actually with breaking and popping and all this stuff, freestyle is freestyling with the moves given. My name is Lucy and my big girl name is Misfit and I've been dancing for two years. The thing that I love about it is that I get to make new friends and Jamie, um, which is our instructor, he, he doesn't just Down, teach switch, dancing, he, ta hit. he teaches like behavior Down, and stuff, which switch, I really hit. like. Another thing that I really like about like going to these classes and stuff is that it's not all choreographed where you can, he teaches you these moves and then you can mix them up and make them into something else. Flavored flow is all about having flavor in your flow and, it's, and flow is just about how you're, you put your dance together and what you choose to. So what you learn in these moves is how you flow with it. You know, so just like I, I try not to teach choreography, I don't want you to learn my dance, I want you to learn the dance and then I want you to flow and put your flavor style into however you want to. Nice guys, spin and freeze. Teaching the young ones, I want to also instill a lot of the uh, values and virtues uh, such as courage, uh, self-esteem. Well, I've always loved music and dancing, but I'm, uh, I got ADHD, so I'm always active and I always have energy, so this kind of gets my energy out sometimes for the next day so I'm not all crazy and grumpy in the morning. You know, if you give them character, personality, and hard work, they're gonna fulfill their dream and, and work hard at it. I see you guys are all growing, and I love it. I'm super proud of each and every one of you guys. This is the best way I can give back. You know, I, if I can change someone's life, I've done my job, I feel. There are breaking and popping classes for all ages almost every day of the week. Check out their schedule at flavoredflowstudio.com or find them on Facebook and Instagram. Our local music series continues this week with Columbus singer-songwriter T-Wan. Here he is performing the title track off his 2017 album, The Upside Down. And it's no coincidence that he's a fan of the Netflix hit Stranger Things. Upside down, feel it all around. Hey, we can see how far it's done. We can be more than one or oh, just two. Is this a game for one or oh, two? Black as white and diamonds in the sky. Like 
last forever now. And we can be friends forever and fall together. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can do damage. Make the fellas whether they want to or not. And come up with our rules and set up in the sun. And we can be aliens, let our heart beat as one. We can be upside down, strangers all around. We can be aliens, let our heart beat as one. We can be upside down, ooh, strangers all around. And we can be aliens, let our heart be as one. We can be upside down, strangers all around. And we can be, and we can be, and we can be, yeah. Upside down, hey, yeah. makes no difference where we walk to, yeah. where we truly choose to talk to, yeah. whether it be mental or physical, we decide to see the sun and how it feels and how it works. them look crazy they can't touch this no and we can be aliens let our heart beat as one we can be upside down strangers all around we can be aliens let our heart beat as one we can be upside down Ooh, strangers all around and we can be aliens, let our heart beat as one. And we can be upside down, oh, strangers out loud. And we can be, and we can be, and we Learn more about Tiwan and check out more of his music at tiwancreates.com. We also have more videos from his studio visit, including his newest single at wsu.org slash local tunes. Our next story takes us up to Northeast Ohio, where we find artist Frank Aridi. After graduating from Bowling Green State University in 2007, he returned to his family home in Parma, only to be greeted by the Great Recession. As he started working odd jobs to make ends meet, he came to realize that he wasn't alone in his struggle to just get by. And so he began painting portraits of his millennial friends who were all facing similar challenges trying to achieve the American dream. My mom came home with this Norman Rockwell uh, address book and I want to say every few pages had one of his paintings in it and what struck me was 
for the first time I was seeing work that was so realistic that it looked, you know, almost photographic. He was taking a drawing class, a model drawing class at Tri-C at the age of 14. I think that's when I knew this is going to be Frank's thing. I think this is going to be his profession or niche. After I graduated Bowling Green, it would have been spring of 2007. I really didn't have a huge plan or really had no clue of what I wanted to do. I knew that, you know, I'd just gotten this degree in painting and drawing and there's not really a lot of things you can do, especially in Cleveland at the time, where you're using your art degree, unless you're going into art education or you, you know, are in a more commercial kind of arena, but for painting and drawing, you're kind of limited. So I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do, but I moved home and I moved back into uh, the house that I grew up in. And I think at that time I started thinking about how a lot of my friends and myself included all left our, our part of town to go away to college or go to the military. and you know, with the understanding that we were going to go out into the world and not return or return under different circumstances. And then we all ended up coming home. And that struck a chord with me and I, I started thinking about that. I would say about half of the people he's painted are my friends or I know them. <laughs> so I feel like there's a lot of uh, characters in Cleveland that kind of stand out because this isn't like a, um, a white collar city, you know, it's kind of blue collar, a lot of uh, creative people kind of stand out in the city as opposed to other big cities. So I feel like it captures what Cleveland really is. I had a problem with drugs. Uh, I was addicted to opiates for a while and I still am an addict, but I've been clean for three years. Frank is uh, dedicated. He is charismatic, he's very intelligent, and he's honest. He's one of the most honest people I know. And he's very supportive. I've seen people paint realistically, obviously, before, and photorealistically, which is what he does. What impressed me was the fact that, that there, was, there was so much feeling and so much a sense of the presence of the person in these paintings. Um, in his own self-portrait, which was, I think, the first thing I saw of his, and, and in a number of other portraits of young men and women usually who apparently were members of, of his circle and his family uh, in Parma. I was blown away. That was something I've never really seen done before, like painting tattooed weirdos, but in such a fine art style. I mean, just how much it looks like everybody, just like the detail of even like the vest I was wearing, like just like denim and uh, just hair, even like the little strings coming off of fabric, like it just blew my mind. I would say that it was definitely a, a generational thing that we were experiencing this decision or lack of decision making that all kind of had us returning home. Trying to show that uncertainty or that struggle that we were experiencing, we are experiencing as a generation. That was one of the main goals and what I was trying to accomplish in the earliest portraits. He didn't give up. He just like, he worked in a steel mill to support, to pay for everything so that he can continue to do this. Like he did a lot of uh, odd jobs, went back to work, but this, he stayed true to his art form and he just persevered. He's a guy with, with a lot of um a lot of hope that is focused in a way that, that is a little bit off-center. You wouldn't expect these paintings to be produced by a hopeful guy, by a guy who, who has Norman Rockwell informing his unconscious, by somebody who has that kind of American dream in, in the background. I think that, in the end, is, is what those early discouraged people in those paintings are about, is the fact that, that he himself really is, is a man of considerable hope and determination. And he believes in himself. He believes that he can do it. And, and the world is responding to this. Frank is a success story. I think he'll continue to be.
This time of year, at least on milder days, who doesn't love sitting around a campfire? Check out the work of this Nevada-based welder who fabricates custom fire pits that are 360 degrees of awesome. My name is Jim Moffat, founder and creator behind Twisted Steel. I make fire pits out of maybe mine casings, old propane tanks, and just about anything I can find. I worked construction most of my life. I opened a welding shop in 2000 and mainly did fences and some fancy gates and whatnot. I started creating fire pits in, I believe, June of 2014. The first step of creating a fire pit is the chalk outline, which can take anywhere from a day to a week or more. Then the next step is to grab the plasma cutter and start cutting on it. I can cut one in probably five or six hours. Today I'm cutting a fire pit for a client that lives in Tahoe. Her and her husband are avid elk hunters, so we decided to go with two bull elk fighting, elk standing in the trees, and she also wanted bears, so I added a, a mama bear, a papa bear, and three baby bears to represent their family of five. It's really rewarding to bring people's visions to life. A lot of my clients have no artistic skills at all. Uh, one was an accountant and she just relied on me to bring her vision to life in a fire pit. When you create something that is basically their idea, it's, uh, there's no feeling like it. It's hard to pick a favorite. They're all just super fun. My dragon fire pit had flying dragons, uh, burning up the forest, uh, dragon on the ground with just stars and space and burnt trees as well as living trees. It was, it was just fun and came together really easy. Once you start the fire and the fire in the background really makes things come to life. Cutting fire pits allows me to bring out my creative side that I didn't even know I really had until uh, just a few years ago. That guy looks good, huh? I really wasn't sure about this when I uh, started Twisted Steel and started doing this. And you know, I, I was in my 50s when I did this. And in my youth, I had no idea I would end up here and it's just, uh, it's really neat to find yourself and to find something you love and just go with it. That's our show. You can find all of our stories at WOSU.org and give us a follow on social. We're in all the usual places, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're leaving you today with more music by Columbus singer-songwriter Tiwan. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Jackie Schaefer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next week. I plan on taking glory the way that you never knew it. I plan on showing you the way that you should always do it.
We are in my new cafe, my confectionery cafe, Mellow Boutique Confections. Part of the um, part of the research that I've done in, in, in food is really trying to make sure that, that I and my team really understand why you make the ingredient choice that you make and how that basically interacts with the human body. That in addition to the, the commitment to using, designing all the recipes around, you know, real food, whole food ingredients, not using uber refined flours, you know, all the sort of stuff that we now know we shouldn't really consume. I really hope that Mellow can contribute to that in a, in a, in a, in a really positive way. I'm not trying to say that Mellow is, is health food, but it is food. It is not junk. It is not made with junky ingredients. There's, there's thought behind the way that it was built and constructed. Catch Columbus at its creative best on Broad and High, Thursday nights at 8 o'clock on WOSU-TV. Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. PNC, committed to Central Ohio, for the achiever in you. From these contributing sponsors, and viewers like you, thank you.